Today on Smacky's Garage, we're gonna be installing a thermostat on a Ford engine. We're gonna be working on this 1969 Mustang behind me. We're gonna end up taking this thermostat, we're gonna modify it so that it's easier to get some of the trapped air out, and then we're gonna do a full install on it on this vehicle. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Now a thermostat is a really simple device. Now this device is on the front of the engine, it's in the coolant path. The way a thermostat works is they sit in between the radiator and the engine itself, the coolant lines of the engine. What the thermostat allows is the engine to heat up much quicker than the rest of the cooling system. Now the reason why it's important that the engine heats up quicker is because when you're running a colder engine harder, and when you're first starting it and you start driving on it, you know, when it's more cold, there's more of a chance for damage to the engine. So you wanna to try to get that engine up to operating temperature as quick as possible. And without a thermostat here, you'll have the hot water from the engine going through the full cooling system, through the radiator, getting cooled off, and then coming back to the engine itself. So it's actually better to run a thermostat to help manage the heat. Now, one of the things that I noticed on my car last year is, yeah, I believe I have a 180 degree thermostat in the vehicle itself, and the temperature is actually getting up higher than that, significantly higher than that. When I'm sitting in about 80, 90 degree weather and I'm sitting in traffic or just slow cruise, I'm seeing temperatures as high as almost 210. Now, the engine's fully capable of handling that, so I'm kind of interested to see, is the thermostat that's in there higher? Is it not working correctly? Is it potentially getting a little bit stuck? Or does the cooling system just not have enough capacity to cool it? Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you a tip on working with this thermostat to make, it, make the install a little bit easier and potentially perform a little bit better. Now here's the thermostat that we're gonna be installing. It's a Summit 180 degree thermostat. You can see the temperature of the thermostat here on the back. It's kind of hard to read, but it is there. And it's pretty much a standard ten, sub $10 thermostat. This one is designed with a jiggle pin in it. So you can see this little pin here that kind of jiggles when you move it back and forth. The main role of this pin is to make sure that if it, there's any air trapped in the engine, you have this mounted up, so the pin is mounted up. The air can get through this when this thermostat is closed to help you make sure that there's no air pockets in the car. What I think we're gonna do here is I'm either gonna try to remove this pin and open that hole up, or I'm gonna place another hole in it to give a little bit more flow through it. On my car, I'm okay making this modification and I'm doing it specifically to make it easier on myself. I think you can actually buy thermostats that have holes drilled in them. It allows a little bit of coolant through while the car is warming up. You know, you shouldn't drill it too big, but I'm gonna start, I'm probably gonna put a 1 8 hole here or remove this. Now before I go ahead and start taking this apart, I'm actually gonna remove the thermostat from my car that's there today. Now on Ford engines, the thermostat's gonna be located between the intake manifold down here and this water coolant neck. So to get to it, we need to take this water coolant neck off. And before we do that, we actually need to drain some of the coolant so that it's not gonna pour out everywhere. So on this car, you can see the radiator drain is right there. So all I have to do is twist it a little bit. I'm gonna put a half inch hose on it and dump it into a container. All right, now the hose is on there so that it's coming directly from there down to this tank down here so I can drain some of the coolant. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain some of this coolant to get it a little bit lower. All right, now that I've got a gallon of coolant out, I'm ready to start taking apart the car. Okay, so I'm gonna take off this hose clamp and then these two bolts, and I should just be able to pull this forward. So we got the elbow off, and what I'm seeing is this is also a 180 degree thermostat. Now, looking at it, we'll have to figure out if it's opening or not, but what I'm noticing already is, so it's installed in this orientation, and this jiggle valve would be close to the bottom, which means it wouldn't let the air out if it was causing an issue if the air was trapped up here. So that's not ideal, so we're gonna fix that when we reinstall this one. I'm also gonna end up 
Let's go ahead and remove this gasket, which I'm gonna have to scrape off. And then uh, we're probably gonna end up just drilling a hole in it if I can't get that jiggle valve out. I noticed while I was taking out the, a lot of the coolant that the upper radiator hose actually didn't have a lot of coolant in it. So there's a good chance that there was some, a lot of air trapped in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this out, clean this up, and then get the new one installed. Okay, so I've got this pretty clean, but you know, to really clean out the inside, I actually need to use a ultrasonic cleaner to do this. And it's a good chance for me to try out one of the new ones that I have been using. And I haven't used it on anything on the coolant related parts, but mainly on carburetor related parts. So let's go ahead and let's drop this in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I got this off of Amazon and I'll leave it linked in the description below, but it seems to work pretty well on the carbureted parts and cleaning out gunk to places you can't get them. So this was kind of a mess before we put it in. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna plug it in, power it on and see how well it cleans this. Now it uses both temperature and ultrasonic to clean it. So you can set essentially the temperature you wanna run at. I'm gonna try running it at 20, let's do 30 C. And time, I'm gonna do 10 minutes. Let's do 15 minutes to see where we get to and let's go ahead and run it. So heat is on, ultrasonic is on. So I think for looking at and cleaning up a 50 plus year old part, it actually did a pretty good job. You still got some rust in there, but all the loose crap is off and it, now I can finally clean it up before I wanna get it back on the car. I might actually hit this with a coat of paint first because up there is fine, you won't see this, but down here it's, you can see some overspray and just some area with, where it's not perfect. Now on this thermostat, I've made many attempts to try to get this little jiggle valve out on the old one without success. So I'm actually just gonna drill a hole. I decided to put an eighth inch hole here and it should be okay with the water neck design. So if I look at the water neck and I'm gonna be putting this in, as long as it is uh, close to inboard, I should be okay. So where I'm gonna put the holes, I'm actually gonna put it right on the opposite side here, on right next to the jiggle valve, so that I know what way should be pointed up. All right, so there we go. So I actually went with a 330 seconds hole there rather than an eighth inch, because you know that valve really is there to help let some air pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that 330 seconds hole. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this back ready to go together. After painting it, it came up pretty nice. So I got the coolant temperature sensor back in and I'm ready to put this together. So we're, let's look at how it goes together then we'll get it back on the car. Okay, so to put this together, we have the gasket. It's a Felpro 3504 that we're gonna be using. Now this gasket's gonna go right on here and then the thermostat's gonna go inside. Now, it's important while we put the thermostat in, we get this hole straight up because we wanna make sure that any of the air that's in there can get through. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in just like this. So this side goes towards the outside of the engine. This side is sticking in the engine and we install it like this. So let's go ahead and get this on the car. Okay, so we are installed. You can see the paint looks much better on it. Everything's in place and there shouldn't be any other issues. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill it up, check for some leaks. The only thing I didn't show in video is you really have to torque it down to the right specifications of the year engine that you have in your car. This I get to look up to see what they are, but make sure you torque it down so that the gasket seals. You heard me talking a little bit about making sure that the thermostat is kind of in that pocket. If it's not in that pocket, there's a chance that it could kind of rock and potentially leak out the bottom. So it's something else to watch out for. I thought about putting a little bit of gasket adhesive on it to hold the thermostat in place. That would probably be a good idea if it's loose like mine was, 
but I didn't end up doing it and it should be coming up fine. Now I gotta go ahead and put some coolant in it. Now you all know how to burp the coolant from the system. Thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next week.